very basic first aid and how to deal with a snake bite because one of the biggest issues on farms is snakes are out of water or they're looking to mate. So we are going to go through how to apply a snake bite bandage today on Ethan. Ethan's going to be our snake bite victim and this is just for the purposes of... However, my husband Ashley, who is behind the camera, has in the past. So uh, we are going to give you a very quick rundown on um, what that's like. We, we do in Australia have a lot of um, dangerous snakes and we've seen brown snakes here, haven't we? Yeah. You were there when dad got bitten? Yeah. Yeah, not good, hey? Pushed you out of the way so you didn't get bitten, which was lucky. So, and I've even stepped over a tie pan um, on our driveway behind us. So you just never know when you're gonna get bitten is um, stepping on one and it, it strikes uh, as a uh, defense mechanism or you might be in the chook house collecting eggs and there's one in the in the chook pen. So we always do a very quick snake check before we go into any of the sheds, don't we? Yeah. Make sure there's no snakes on the roof or on the ground or anything. Um, but the majority of the snakes we see at splitters are beautiful and they're pythons and they won't harm anyone else but perhaps a few eggs or a few of our chickens. So anyway, take your position, Ethan, on the ground. You've just been bitten by a snake. So we are lucky here, we've got a um, defib as well. Um, I always make sure that this is an area where the kids, um, the kids know where it is. We keep this in our laundry and we always make sure that they know how to use it. We do a, a first aid course once a year just to make sure everyone knows what to do. Um, and this is really uh, just a backup, but applying a snake bite bandage, they say that you need to get a snake bite bandage on within five minutes. That's just five minutes of being bitten by a dangerous snake. After that, your, um, your likelihood of having really bad symptoms or even dying is, um, is, is higher. So we also have our e-pen. So as, you, as I would have said, on our farm tours, um, when I leave the house, more or less, I carry this pouch with me and it's got bandages in it. It's also got EpiPens, because as I said, Ashley behind the camera is allergic to bees. So that doesn't really help us at times. So I've got to make sure that I've always got something to administer. Two bandages. Um, a, a compression bandage is the best bandage to use. However, I'm very wary that in your cupboard, you are likely to have these, um, these high density crepe bandages, which is just as good. So we're gonna, we're gonna apply one of these today. Again, I'm rambling and we should be looking after the victim. So, Ethan has been bitten on the leg, haven't you? You stepped on a snake and it bit you. I'm lucky I've got a pen, pen in here. Where was the bite? Here? I'm gonna remove the boot and I want him to be very calm and still. So first thing is make sure the snake's not around. Don't put yourself or the victim in any more danger than he was already in. Secondly, I'm going to mark where no he's snake. been bitten. What's that? No snake. I just had a look. <laughs> no snake around. So you've been bitten here, Ethan. Okay, there's the bite. So we can see the bite and I am going to just put a big circle around that so that when we get to the hospital, they know where the snake bite wound is. If you don't have a pen, don't worry. Really important just to get the bandage on. So what I'm going to do as tight as I can, I want to put a lot of pressure on this leg to compress the wound. We're going to start at the wound. So I'm going to put, start by putting, and you shouldn't be able to even slip a finger under this bandage. So it's going to be nice and tight. And I'm going to quickly go down to his ankle. And then I'm going to work my way up. Just relax your leggy. So really important that Ethan is not moving, that he's staying relaxed and calm and that you have sent someone or made the phone call yourself to get an ambulance here straight away. But really important not to let the victim move because what happens is that venom in that snake bite is gonna try and make its way to his heart so it can get to his vital organs. So we're gonna continue moving this all the way up his leg. Sorry, Ethan, I'm gonna go as high as I possibly can on that limb. And then what I tend to do is with the bit that's left over at the end, just pop it in there if you can. So that's our snake bite bandage. Now to make sure he doesn't move that limb, we want to immobilize it. And I've just run over, this was pretty easy. I ran over and got a stick and I've just broken as straight a piece off as I possibly can. I'm just gonna put that 
next to his leg, perfect size. And now what I'm gonna do is not as tight as the first bandage, I'm gonna wind that stick up his leg so that he's immobilized, almost like a plaster cast. Staying calm, Ethan. Yeah. Keep talking to your patient, make sure that they're calm. You're pretty calm, you're pretty chill. Yeah. yeah. Having a rest, going to sleep. And again, just pop that in there. And that's the best way I can describe um, how to apply a snake bite bandage and a splint to someone who's been bitten by a snake. I would suggest everyone keep up to date with their first aid, teach their kids very basic first aid um, and teach them how to call triple zero if anything happens, especially if you do live on property. But thank you very much today for, for uh, seeing our patient. <laughs> I'm glad it's not a real scenario. But we are definitely prepared, aren't we, in case we do have a real scenario, which is, um, you know, pretty common out on farms. So. We've got Caterpillar Corner Family Daycare watching at the moment, oh, Ethan. Hey, guys. Oh. Hey. He hasn't really been bitten by a snake. It's all good. It's just a simulation. <laughs> but thank you very much, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.